Hi, I'm Justin. Welcome to the channel and I'm going to go through why I chose to go with these Ultra Lone Peak 4 trail runners for my latest through hike. So we'll go into all the details and what I thought of them and how ultimately they performed. So let's get into it. Now for many years I hiked in traditional leather boots and um, they worked really well in loads of all different circumstances until I started doing long distance trails. And then I had problems with uh, toes in particular. Not so much blisters, but rubbing and toes and uh, pinching in the toe box. And um, I saw lots of different uh, through hiker videos on these ultra lone peak shoes. There's different uh, versions, there's three, four, five. This is actually number four. And I thought I'd give it a go because I was in pain in particular on a through hike last year and ended up with sore heels, uh, sore little toes and generally feeling rather sorry for myself. So, um, and it was affecting how I enjoyed the hike. So I thought I'd give this a go. Um, and there were three main reasons. The first one was the toe box, which attracted me. Now these have got a very, very wide toe box and we'll go into that a little bit more. Um, also they dry really quickly compared to leather boots of course um, so that was attractive and they're really lightweight so um, here's the toe box you can see that it's really much much wider than a normal toe box and um, it felt to me when I put my feet in and when I was walking along that my toes could do that <laughs> and if you've ever had sore feet on a hike <laughs> that you hardly ever get the chance to do that and it was quite nice and that worked really quite well. Um, there, is, there is a toe bump at the front here, which is the same on many trainers, of course, but because you've got a wide toe box, it seems to be a little bit small. Some of my shoes have got the toe bump uh, running all the way around. I don't know if it's called a toe bump, by the way. I just made that up, but you know what I mean. So your toes do feel a little bit exposed, a little bit vulnerable, especially if you're doing rocky walking, treading between rocks, climbing up or down hills. Um, so that was something I was aware of. So I just made sure when I was in those areas, I was careful how I trod and how I lifted and put my feet down. Um, so this blue area all the way around here is really, really well ventilated. So much so that in the morning when you first start walking, your feet can feel cold but you soon warm up and that's ultimately why it uh, dries out your socks and your feet really well and you don't get those overheating problems and if you do um, tread in puddles or stream crossings or whatever they get soaking wet within seconds but they do dry out quite quickly uh, what I did to dry it out was uh, remove the insoles roll them up and squeeze them out and then uh, I could leave them in the sun for less than 30 minutes and they'd all be bone dry. Or once I'd wrung out the insole and my sock, uh, I could put them back on. They were damp then rather than soaking wet. And walking along after about 40 minutes or an hour or so, they'd be dry again then anyway, just from walking along. Um, so that was quite impressive actually. Now, these are 340 grams per shoe, 680 grams total. Um, so they feel light as a feather uh, in your hands and of course most importantly on your feet. Those were the three reasons that I went for them and in all three cases it worked really well and I was pleased. Um, so there are a lot of other features of the shoe which I wasn't sure how they were going to perform uh, and I've seen other people comment on them as well so let's go into a little bit more detail on those. Okay, so I found the soles of these shoes to be very grippy indeed. Uh, descending down uh, gr slippy grass, wet slippy grass banks um, felt really secure and you don't get that in most shoes. Um, these ones felt rock solid in that regard. Um, the, also, they've got this sort of cool foot logo on the bottom. I'm sure some of you have seen that before, which I like. <laughs> and I don't know if you can see, but also on the little... Uh, the little claws here, the five, and on the five toe prints, it's got the words trail claws. Can you see that? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so that was a good touch. I quite enjoyed that. Um, also, um, if you look 
a, a lot of trainers are like this where you've got uh, the foam um, lower sole is tapered outwards so the uh, the actual rubber sole is wider than where your heel sits inside the shoe so that means it's very stable left to right and uh, I found it that to be quite sure-footed walking along uh, also this bit here uh, that's quite low compared to a lot of trainers so your ankle does stick out and this uh, heel part of the shoe is very very flexible look what I can do with that uh, it's not stiff at all like some approach shoes so they are quite flimsy and you'll hear people say that as well um, but I found that to be no problem at all on the East Highland Way uh, which was 82 miles of um, rough walking so in the end that wasn't a problem um, now there's also this little rubber flap at the back here and um, it sticks out and if you wear shorts uh, I don't but if you do wear shorts I've heard people say that that can flick up the water if it's a, if you're walking across wet, across wet grass it can flick up the water up the back of your legs and be quite uncomfortable so I've seen people cut that thing off but I would not advise that um, because it's there uh, to lessen the impact as your heel goes down uh, onto the floor that catches first bends and sort of cushions the blow as your heel hits the floor and that works quite well it also helps create a kind of a rolling action uh, as you're going along it's not like those those rocking trainers uh, but it's it's in the same ballpark it's that kind of effect and so that helps to protect your feet and um, stop your feet from becoming tired throughout the day you know and aching um, something I hardly experienced at all on the on the East Highland Way um, so that's what that thing does um, it also gives a better grip coming downhill on wet or muddy slopes because you've just got more surface contact and that thing's quite flexible so that's the uh, the rubber sole uh, there's also this stone guard here How do, can you see that stone guard it's not it's not a stiff stone guard like many leather or stiff boots not as strong as that but it's somewhere halfway in between so wasp <laughs> somewhere halfway in between so it's um that's what that is uh, you've also got this thing called a gator trap at the back here can you see this um now some people have these um, very thin flexible material a bit like a buff material uh, which skirts the bottom covers your ankle uh, it's not like traditional uk hill walking thick gators uh, they're quite um, quite lightweight and they hook down there and that thing is a, like a velcro flap yeah so that's a velcro flap which can uh, the bottom of the gator can stick onto and if you're not using it you just cover that flap up um, then the gator goes around to the front and there's a kind of a loop here at the front to hook onto and I think some of the gators go through this little loop on the side let me show you there's a loop on the side of the shoe there and I guess th those are for the style gaiters that may go underneath the shoe and then up up the other side like that okay so I don't use those gaiters but that's what the features for cleaning them um, I found this was dead easy I just took the laces out I took the insole out and put them in the washing machine and uh, you can just put them on a cold wash with no detergent and most of the time that'll get rid of all the mud if you need to clean out the bit more you can always go up to 30 degrees or whatever put a bit of soap powder in and uh, they come out clean as a whistle I mean these were filthy dirty but you can see how clean they are now and um, yeah no problem with any of the adhesives or anything if you keep it on a low temperature and um, so they're dead easy to clean and um, well my, one of my concerns before buying them was um, about them being too flimsy and it's well documented they're not expected to last that long I think a lot of people say that use a 400 mile marker um, as being a, a guide um, and I'd agree with that okay, the, the rubber on the bottom is quite soft that's why it's so grippy um, I've already showed you the heel that's quite flexible um, the shoe itself is very very flexible um, I just had some material in there to, to puff it out a little bit I've just removed that but let me show you I can bend this up now almost look I can touch the heel to the toe I mean that's how flexible they are um, so they're not going to last forever but to be honest 
my boots will probably outlive me. Um, but when I wear them for a big long through hike, <laughs> they cause me a lot of pain in the feet. So if my shoes are going to wear out and I've got great feet and there's no aches and pains or anything, then who cares if they wear out early? Your feet are all right. That's got to be more important, hasn't it? One major difference about this shoe is that it's called a zero drop shoe, which means that the bottom is flat. So the heel is at the same height as the ball of the foot. So it does feel a bit strange the first time you walk them, like you're wearing flat sandals or flip flops. So I tried that and I went for a walk just a two miles or so and my calves were aching um, and the back of my knees too um, and that's because your heel is closer to the ground as normal and when you're leaning forward you're stretching out those calves that was happening and if it was aching after two miles then it's no good for a through hike so I had to address that um, so what I did was I got a load of insoles from all my other shoes I know you can go to the shops and buy really good quality upgrade insoles but there's such a wide variety some of them are quite expensive and who knows whether you're going to get the right ones so I just raided all of my shoes and boots these are Scarpa Adidas and that's the original Ultra Lone Peak um, and I tried them all one at a time and went on walks around the block so just to give you some idea of the toe box width you see that there now this one here is the original Ultra and the one in the middle is my Scarpa Terra boots. Look at the difference in the, the toe box width. And this one here is a pair of Adidas trainers. So it's, it's marked, you know, it's, um, it's getting on for about uh, two centimeters wider. So that's what I did. And I did in total uh, 20 walks ranging from one to four miles with different combinations of insoles. I tried thin socks, thick socks, I tried um, liner socks, two pairs of liner socks, different combinations, and I just went on the, just kept going each night on these short walks until I found one where my calves stopped aching and where the back of my knees stopped aching. And eventually I found uh, the way to do it. And it was a pair of Merrill for me, different for you, of course. It was a pair of Merrill insoles and one pair of relatively thin socks. And that was it, and um, no aches and pains. So then I tried that combination with the rucksack and did two 10 mile walks, no problems at all. So even before I went on the trail, I did something like um, 75 miles of walking in the shoes. And I do that with most of my footwear. I totally recommend that uh, to anybody. Don't set foot on the trail with a brand new pair of shoes. You're asking for trouble. So that's what I did. And when I went on the trail, um, I had after 82 miles on the East Highland Way, which included the first three days, if you've not seen the video, go and have a look at the video. Um, I did three very long days between 22 and 25 miles. And I, the best thing I can say is I forgot about my feet. There were no aches and pains at all. I didn't even notice my feet. I was just looking at the views and the map and nature and all the good stuff that we like. <laughs> so that says everything, doesn't it? And um, I had no aches with my calves, my legs or my back or in, nothing at all. So it was a success. Uh, there was one drawback and that is wet feet. Even walking through the dew on reasonably short, medium length grass um, in the morning, your feet would get soaked through in, in seconds. So that was a little bit irritating at the first, but then, you know, you dry them out or you keep circulating your socks with a pair, put the wet ones on the back of your rucksack, dry them out and so on. There are ways around it. Um, possibly you could buy some of those seal skin waterproof socks, but they don't last very long either and they're very expensive. Um, or at a pinch, you could be really cheap and try the bread bag solution. Just put bread bags over each feet, each foot and um, try that. I can't imagine that's gonna last very long either. <laughs> But I know Hazy on his video, he did it round the camp at night, which is a good idea. Put dry socks on and then use those bread bags. So that was it, a really good success. And uh, I just wanted to go into the detail and explain, because I'm sure people considering these type of trail runners might have a similar experience to me if using boots or approach shoes. 
and a bit wary of whether or not they're going to work. Well, that's all of my experience. I hope it was helpful. If so, hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you on the next one.